Hi, this is Hamilton Lighthouser, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Hamilton Lighthouser. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm awesome. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. I want to kick things off by saying congrats on the release of I Had a Dream That You Were Mine, officially out. How are you feeling now that it's been a couple of months and it's been able to sink in? Um, I'm really excited to see that people like it. <laughs> I mean, I've been I waited so long to tour, and now I've just done a bunch of nights in a row, and everyone was like singing along and so fired up about it. I was, it was, uh, it's great to see. There's a lot of emphasis on your vocals on this record, and a lot of stuff that we're hearing is first take. So, what made you want to go with the rawness of this album? Um, because we didn't have a band and it was just the two of us making it, it was really important to keep like the live kind of accidental great moments that we thought we were finding because that's the only way to keep us like spontaneity in the recording. If you're working on a computer, it's very easy to just overanalyze and work things to death because it's easy to do that. It loses how genuine the songs could really be. Yeah. Yeah, and immediate and kind of fun sounding and kind of wild. The, it, <laughs> we had to just sort of, you know, capture everything you could as quick as you could. There's a line that's a part of Sick as a Dog that I'm really curious about. And the line is, I'd keep humming that strange hollow tune till I blew my pipes out, left my throat in ruins. Is there an actual song that you were humming that did that to you? Um, I think maybe that's just like a lifestyle of singing <laughs> and always blowing my voice up. It's, it's part of your bio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How many times has that happened to you in the past? So many. Yeah? Yeah, a couple of years ago I started taking um, vocal uh, steroids when that <laughs> happened. Because a friend of mine who's a Broadway actor turned me on to it. And it really changed my life. Did you have a lot in common with Rostam when you were putting the record together as far as music goes? Or did you kind of have to dig a little bit deeper into each other as far as what you liked? I think that we have a lot of shared aesthetics and we have a lot of like similar histories and music that we've listened to over the years. We, we There is different stuff, but I think that because I knew that I liked the Vampire Weekend records and I knew that he liked the Walkman records, that's where we were <laughs> able to sort of understand each other's history and find a common ground that was pretty substantial. Were there any bands in specific that you found when you did discover that common ground? Um, so many. I mean, we didn't necessarily talk about it that much, but uh, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of as we were writing it, there weren't that many bands' names that came up. But, you know, you can reference like big things like John Lennon records and uh, Pogues records, and I remember talking about them, and uh, uh 50s Dion and the Belmonts the Flamingos stuff like that and as you mentioned before you're now taking the record out on the road here in Toronto for a sold out show at the Opera House the first couple of gigs going over fairly well it's been great actually yeah you posted a photograph where you had a selfie stick and you had the Steve brought that <laughs> yeah, on tour <laughs> and you're like I don't know how to get the stick out of the frame this right. was a I couple weeks was a ago little, yeah a little funny <laughs> it was hard to do I, have I you been able to it. figure it out because the, the trick huh. is in the angle well, I did that, but every time I moved the thing, the stick went right. It went right with it. <laughs> what it, what it, it? I couldn't. I really couldn't figure it out. So you still haven't figured it out. I haven't tried again. Oh, but okay. No, maybe I'll give it another whirl tonight. He's still got it. <laughs> and you told fans how there was a violent lunatic that you saw at your hotel in Utah, and this oh, was a yeah. few weeks back. What happened? Because a lot of people were asking. Oh, there was just this m crazy guy in the parking lot who just. I thought he worked there, but then he started just screaming obscenities <laughs> at everybody. And I went into the lobby to check in. And the guy said, oh, he, he doesn't belong here. Like, <laughs> as, sort of as if he knew the guy and that he wasn't really going to do anything about the fact that this guy was, like, standing right outside. But luckily, he didn't, he didn't hurt anybody. Were you guys just watching this as you were kind of getting to your room? Well, he was, like, following us through the parking lot. So oh. I was, yeah. I thought he was, I thought this was about to be a mess, but I don't know. <laughs> he was all talk and no uh, action. Well, I'm glad that was the case. Yeah. Me too. Was like, welcome to Salt Lake City. Well, I just want to do a little quick fire round with you. So just whatever comes to mind first, say it. Okay. All right. The first one. What's the greatest form of dedication you've seen from a fan? From, oh, a tattoo. Somebody showed me a tattoo. The other, I've seen a bunch of tattoos, but somebody the other day had a big one in L.A. 
What's the worst job you've had? Um, security guard at a museum. If you could learn any language fluently, which would it be? Um, Spanish. It would just be so useful. What's the worst thing to eat while on the road that you find that you eat constantly? I do okay these days. Okay. I, but my cousin Harry was on tour last one. He took me to Taco Bell, and it was <laughs> terrible. It was so bad. And for the last one, who would you love to find out is a fan of this record? Um, any artist, any celebrity? Uh, Neil Young. And just to wrap everything up, anything you want to leave with all of your fans who will be viewing the interview? Um, how you doing? <laughs> Beautiful parting words. Just thank you so much for joining me today. All right. Thanks very much for having me. It's my pleasure. And remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time.